buying into that move. He tells us why and what he is buying right now. And Jamie Dimon says central banks have been 100% dead wrong on forecasts. And it doesn't matter if the Fed hikes again. Is he right? We'll ask former Fed Vice Chair Randy Quarles. And a big payment player and two big tech names on deck with earnings. And our guest says one of them has a lot of problems, but they're good ones. He'll explain coming up in earnings exchange. Let's start with today's market. So if you heard Scott say we're kind of heading towards session lows here. Dom Chu has the numbers, Dom. Just about session lows. And what we mean by this is it's been a generally positive day, Kelly, to your point. But at the highs of the session, just to give you an idea of the context today, the S&P 500, which is currently up seven points right now, was up roughly 42 points at the high and up roughly two points at the lows of the session. So again, tilting towards that lower side of things, 42.24 is the last trade there. Keep an eye on 42.36. We've mentioned this so-called 200-day moving average or longer-term trend line for the markets on a rolling basis. We're sitting slightly below there right now. That's something traders are watching. The Dow Industrial is up about one quarter of 1%, 92 points, 33,029. The Nasdaq Composite up 21 points, roughly two-tenths of 1%, 13,040 the last trade there. So again, losing some steam in this midday part of the session. Now, one part that's been gaining steam throughout the course of the last few weeks has been Bitcoin. Now, if you take a look at this chart over the last year or so, we have now topped 33,000. At one point today, depending on which metric or which exchange you look at on Bitcoin, we were north of 35,000 for each Bitcoin. It's up about 8.5%. This is the highest level in quite some time, going back to better parts of the earlier part of this year. So Bitcoin, keep an eye on those. It's been a breakout. Remember, we had some trading ranges that were slightly below there for the better part of the last six months, and now we've kind of broken up to that level here. So we'll watch Bitcoin prices. And then on the earnings side of things, generally speaking, most of the companies that have reported so far today, and there have been a lot of them, have been positive on both the top and the bottom lines. Companies like 3M, though, up 5.5%, General Electric, up 6%, Sherwin-Williams, which is now down on the day, and Logitech, all not only beat, but then raised their forecast as well. And then RTX, the company formerly known as Raytheon, United Technologies, they merged big defense aerospace contractor, up 7%. They beat on results and then added $10 billion to their stock buyback. So a lot of earnings headlines. And believe it or not, this is tame, Kelly, because we've got a lot more results coming on later on this week. I'll send things back over. Yeah, look at Logitech up 12%, RTX down banks. 5% bond yields may be spooking markets, but my next guest says we shouldn't be so alarmed. They're just reverting back to the historical mean, along with inflation, taxes, and nominal GDP. Joining me now is Jason Trenner, Chairman and CEO of Strategist Research Partners, a Baird company. Also with us is Brian Weinstein, Head of Global Markets at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. It's great to have you both here this afternoon. Jason, I'll start with you. Um, you know, you think this is normal. This is normal. Everything's fine. Stop panicking, everybody. Yeah, I think that's my, my view. I think what was not normal was the Fed uh, fixing interest rates, the most important price in the world, for 12 years. And I think the problem now, I think generationally, and maybe I can say this because I'm maybe a bit older, but um, I, I think people have forgotten that there's, you know, normally people who lend other people money require some premium over the right rate of inflation to, to do so. And we, got, we all got very accustomed to the fact that real rates were, were zero or negative in some cases. And so I think to the extent to which the Fed is unlikely to use quantitative easing again soon, I, I hope, um, that would mean that there will be a, a typical spread of about 200 basis points between the rate of inflation um, and the 10-year Treasury. I, I also think that there are structural reasons why inflation is likely to stay higher uh, than the zero to two percent range we became accustomed to as well. Let me ask both of you just to be clear. So, do you think that five percent yields? You can pick the ten, the thirty, you know, whatever. But I mean, on the long end, Jason, is that basically the top, or do you think they could get head higher from here? 